36-year-old Negro man had been shot and killed. His sniper fire came from atop a nearby building. Then at Crawford and Huff, the arrest of a man, woman, and child. Riot on Huff. The Huff Uprising came as a shock to many white residents of Cleveland. As a city that has long regarded itself as the quote best place for a Negro, politicians and journalists blamed outside agitators and radicals for the violence. But as with all urban uprisings in black and Latino communities before and after, the violence wasn't spontaneous. Instead, it was rooted in a combination of institutional discrimination, municipal neglect, and tarnished police community relations. As with many northern cities, the roots of Cleveland's race problems began with the Great Migration. Black Clevelanders achieved remarkable success as some served on the city council as well as judges and state legislators. But this success represented a small fragment of Cleveland's black community, most of whom occupied unskilled and service sector jobs and were largely denied access to the city's booming manufacturing industry and to its labor unions. Discrimination and white resentment increased as more southern black migrants moved to the city in search for employment opportunities and to escape racial terrorism in the south. About 72,000 blacks called Cleveland home in 1930, an increase from about 10,000 in 1910. Blacks settled on the east side and expanded eastward as whites continued to flock to outlying sections of the city and rural areas. Neighborhoods such as Huff and Glenville went from being predominantly white to predominantly black within a decade. By 1960, about 251,000 blacks lived in Cleveland, comprising about 30% of the population. Cleveland was unprepared for this rapid demographic shift, and many white residents resented black newcomers. When Huff went from a middle-class white community to a working-class black community, landlords subdivided homes into small apartments and increased rents in rat-infested, overcrowding homes that were declining in infrastructure. Northern black newspapers reported extensively on police brutality, and Cleveland was no exception. The call in posts demanded that the city address the issue. During civil rights protests, particularly one in Little Italy in 1964, the police stood idle by as white counter-demonstrators attacked peaceful marchers. Thus, Huff was a neighborhood plagued by overcrowding in homes and schools, sanitation issues, dilapidated buildings, limited opportunities to escape, repressive police tactics, and filled with businesses ran by white owners who charged predatory prices for goods to a population trapped by poverty and lack of transportation. Although black residents had addressed these issues for years, city officials were lackadaisical about resolving them. The spark of the rebellion occurred at the 79ers Cafe on East 79th Street in Huff Ave on July 18, 1966. Two brothers owned and ran the store and their majority black patrons reviled them for their treatment of customers. What likely prompted the rebellion began when a black man entered the building to purchase a pint of cheap wine to go and then ask for a glass of water while sitting at the bar. The brothers had long known that some customers had drank wine while asking for water even though the law mandated that wine be carried out and not consumed on the premise. One of the brothers instructed the bartender to not quote, give no a drink of water. Live it, the man left and taped a sign onto the bar that read, quote, no water for Others remembered it reading, quote, this place will not serve colors. Nonetheless, a crowd circulated around the bar shortly after. Despite the brothers' attempt to guard their business, the crowd chased them back into the building. Protesters threw rocks, bottles, and other objects at police once they arrived, and the usual over-exaggerated claims of sniping circulated among law enforcement officials. As with all uprisings of this era, the crowd clashed with police and targeted shopkeepers, often those who were hostile to black patrons, and, for the most part, left black-owned and friendly white businesses alone. When heavy rain entered, the police shot out streetlights and battled alleged snipers who were never discovered. Black protesters were unarmed. Yet, officers kicked in doors, broke up furniture, hurled racial epithets at residents, and chased defenseless women and children from their homes. One woman was killed after sticking her head outside to yell for her children who were separated from her. 
Despite the chaos and the carnage, on the second day, euphoria clouded the neighborhood since residents were gleeful that they had stood up to law enforcement, which for years had harassed and brutalized them. Despite the police chief's confidence in maintaining order, Mayor Ralph Loker asked the governor to bring in the National Guard, which later restored order in the preceding days. In the end, four people were killed, all black by police officers and one allegedly by a white vigilante from Little Italy. Thirty people were injured and city officials estimated one to two million dollars in property damage. In the aftermath, city officials and the local press, providing no persuasive evidence, blamed outside agitators and communists. Residents disapproved of the official report and led by former Congressman Louis Stokes held a citizen grand jury, which concluded that the uprising was caused by deplorable living conditions, municipal neglect, and rampant police abuse and disrespect for the community. The uprising led many white residents to back future mayor Carl Stokes. In addition, it led to redevelopment of the Huff neighborhood. The big question is, was the event in Huff a riot or an uprising? For decades, politicians, journalists, and even scholars have used the term riot, but recent scholarly works have pushed back against the term. These scholars have argued that riots insinuate inarticulate expressions of rage, mob, and irrationality, whereas uprisings imply political content short of a full-fledged revolutionary act. Huff, like many uprisings before and after, was indeed a reaction to political grievances that black residents had addressed for years peacefully and the white power structure either ignored them or resisted calls for change. 